Bonjour, comment ça va? Uh, good morning, sorry, we're not in French class. We're going to talk a little bit about um, areas of rhombuses, trapezoids, and kites today. Rhombuses can be found in 11.2, um, and trapezoids is 11.3. Kites is not really a part of your textbook information, but I added it because it's the same formula as the formula for area of a rhombus, which means one half of diagonal one and uh, times diagonal two. And just so you remember what um, a diagonal of a rhombus or a kite is really for any quadrilateral, remember it's a segment joining um, the vertices of two non-consecutive sides. So in this picture on the left in rhombus ABCD, the first diagonal in blue, diagonal D sub one, would be segment BD and diagonal D sub two would be segment AC. Remember it's the whole entire segment from vertex to vertex. It does not stop at the intersection. So just be mindful of that. I think that's really where we have a tendency to make some of the biggest mistakes. And also do recall that if you really prefer to write this as diagonal one times diagonal two all over two. That's just an alternative form of that formula. So it's not really a big deal. Um, for the kite, the formula is the same as finding the area of a rhombus, diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. And in this picture on the right, the name of diagonal one would be segment ZX, and the name of diagonal two would be segment WY. So just be mindful of making sure that you can uh, identify exactly what a diagonal is. We're also going to be finding the area of a trapezoid, and the formula for area of a trapezoid is height is one half of the height of the trapezoid, remember that should be parallel to the bases, excuse me, perpendicular, perpendicular to both of the bases, sorry, um, times base one plus base two. So B sub one is the name of one base and B sub two is the name of the other. You're just trying to distinguish uh, between your two bases, okay? And so B sub one would be measured from this vertex to this vertex right here. Remember that the height has always got to be perpendicular to the bases. Got to be perpendicular to the bases. Okay, so let's talk about some applications of those a little bit. We're going to approximate the area of Nevada because Nevada is approximately the shape of a trapezoid. It's not perfect, but it's close. So we're going to use that to figure out what that is, which means you kind of want to identify these parts. So let's look at the parallel sides. The parallel sides are the bases of a trapezoid. Remember that the parallel sides are the bases. So this could be considered base one, base two, and the height always has to be perpendicular to the bases, so that would be the 309 miles, okay? So our formula for area of a trapezoid is one half height times base one plus base two. So we've got everything we need to plug in, and whenever you don't, that's when you need to figure out some stuff along the way. This is 205 plus five is 11, so one half of 309 times 716. If you want to go ahead and take half of 716, fine. If you don't want to and you want to type the whole thing in first, that's okay as well. Uh, it shouldn't make any difference. And when you get the area, you should get, obviously we are approximating because those were approximate measurements, 110,622 square miles would be the approximate area of Nevada. Okay. That's a basic application of trapezoid. Um, let's talk about finding the area of a kite. Remember that the formula for area of a kite is going to be one half of diagonal one times diagonal two. If again, you prefer to write D1 times D2 all over two, that's the same. Just make sure that you can correctly identify what an entire diagonal is, KM is an entire diagonal and LN is an entire diagonal. So in this case, you would find the length of KM, which is seven and LN, which is six divided by two and 42 divided by two would be 21 square meters. Don't forget that area is measured in square units. Moving right along, let's find the area of a trapezoid and notice that in this case, I'm looking at trapezoid SRQP, um, and I have base one, which looks like from here to here, 
that that would be the length of SR is 5 meters and base 2 7 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my formula for air of a trapezoid, which is 1 half height times base 1 plus base 2. Notice that I used to try to say the words instead of saying the letters as much as possible just because it's helpful for you to think about what it is you're using. 1 half of, remember that the height has to be perpendicular to the bases. Uh, okay, well now we're stuck because we don't know what that height is. You might consider this to be the height. Sure, of course it can be. It is perpendicular to both of the bases because they're parallel. So if one of these angles is a right angle, the other one is as well because same side interior angles are supplementary. Um, but we don't know what the height is. So we're going to leave that blank for a minute. We're going to come back and we're going to find it. But we're going to add 5 plus 7 to get the sum of the bases. So let's figure out how we're going to get that height. Notice that in this trapezoid, you should see this 60 degree angle right here, which based on your knowledge of um, special right triangles, you should remember that um, you can use um, you can use your special right triangles and drop an altitude from S perpendicular to the base that's seven meters and then we can find the, the height this way. So here's the height. This is also the height. Now what we've done is we've created um, a rectangle and um, a triangle. And sure, of course, you could go ahead and find the area that way by adding them. But either way, we're still going to need to know what that height is. So remember that opposite sides are congruent. So if that's 5, then this must be 5 right here. And 7 minus 5 would tell you that this side is two, right? And that is opposite the 30 degree angle in your special right triangle. And so if this two is the, sh the length of the short leg, then the length of the longer leg should be two times the square root of three. So all the information about the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 triangle is something that you're going to need to remember um, from chapter eight or from, from your formulas. You may want to get those things out and refresh your, your memory a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this two with this two because I can and I get my area to be 12 square root of 3 meters squared. That's the area of the trapezoid that you see shown. Okay? All right, let's consider a different diagram. So suppose that we um, decrease H so that the measure of angle P is 45 degrees while R and Q and the bases stay the same. What's the area of this trapezoid? So let's redraw this a little bit. Let's go ahead and redraw this. And here is P, and this was, I believe, S up at the top, S, R, and Q, right? And we already know that this, and it says, does say the bases stay the same, which means this is still 5 meters, this is still 7 meters, but now we're changing this and shortening it up a little bit so that this is 45 degrees. Same process again, we're still going to drop an altitude right here, and we're still going to write the formula for area of a trapezoid which is 1 half height times base 1 plus base 2. But again, we're going to have to figure out what that height is. We still know the bases are 5 and 7. That's all good. But H is still an unknown quantity. So same thing. If we say opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, then this is 5, which makes this 2, because you've got to remember that this whole thing was given as 7. So maybe it's a good idea if we put a bracket there, right? And then in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, remember that the legs are congruent because it's also an isosceles right triangle, which means that the height is just 2. So we can plug that in right there and cancel those values, and then we can say that the area is 12 meters squared which wasn't nearly as bad as the 60. Be careful with the problem above. You may have to approximate sometimes those values. You might have to put them in exact form with simplified radicals, one or the other, but you just never know what you're going to get. So just make sure you're always following directions. Let's try a couple more problems that are a little more challenging. Let's find the area of a rhombus if each side measures 13 centimeters. So let's remember that in a rhombus, all sides are congruent. So each side is 13 centimeters and one diagonal is 10 centimeters. So let's go ahead and draw a diagonal in the picture. It doesn't matter which one you want to call it. I'm going to say that that's 10 right there. Okay, and we want to find the area. So area of a rhombus is the same as area of a kite, one half of diagonal one times diagonal two. So one half of 10. That's great. We know what one diagonal is. Unfortunately, we don't know the other diagonal. So let's go ahead and draw in a segment to represent the other diagonal. 
what's going to happen to that 10 when we draw in this diagonal? What's going to happen to that 10 is that it's going to get cut because remember that a rhombus is still a parallelogram, which means the diagonals bisect each other. So the 10 has now been cut into 5 and 5. And what else is true about the diagonals of a rhombus? I'm not sure if you remember, but the diagonals of a rhombus are, and this is critical to the formula, perpendicular. Just like in all the other area formulas, you need to know that the height is perpendicular to the base, the diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus, and the diagonals in a kite are perpendicular. So if we want to find the area of the entire rhombus, and we're looking for this other diagonal, which would be, I'm going to highlight it in yellow, this is what's missing is diagonal 2 is what's unknown, right? That's an unknown thing right there. So let's figure out what that is. And if you notice that um, in case you forgot, I'm sure you haven't forgotten, you now have four congruent right triangles and you know two sides. So remember, what can we use to find the area, excuse me, what can we use to find the length of the third side of a right triangle if we know two sides? And that means we can say five squared plus, I'm just gonna call it um, a squared equals 13 squared using the Pythagorean theorem, right? Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 25 plus a squared equals 169. This is a Pythagorean triple you should already know, but in case you forgot, you should figure out that the side length of your triangle is 12, which means that that other diagonal is how much? That should be 24. Remember, that we were cutting each diagonal in half. So finally, your area, if you want to cancel the, the 2 with the 24 and get 12, just because it's easier to multiply by 10, that's why I would recommend that. Then you're going to get 120 centimeters squared for the area of that rhombus. Not too bad. Let's try something a little more challenging. Let's find the area of a parallelogram if the sides measure 12 millimeters and 8 millimeters and one angle measures 50 degrees. So I'm going to call this one 12 millimeters and 8 millimeters. Remember the properties of a, and, and I'm going to say the angle in between is 50. I'm going to put it on one of the acute angles. And remember that the properties of a parallelogram opposite sides are congruent, right? Okay, so in the area of a parallelogram is base times height. That hasn't changed, and we can use any one of the sides as the base. I'm just going to use the 12, okay? But we don't know what the height is. So again, we're going to have to drop an altitude, right? And we're going to drop an altitude so that we can create a right triangle. And how does that help us when we create a right triangle? Because maybe we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe we can use a 30, 60, 90 triangle or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. In this case, we can't use any of those. What are we going to have to use? Since this is 50 degrees, we're going to have to use trig to find the height, which would be here, right? So where's the height in relation? Remember, if we're going to have to use trig, I want you to ask yourself, where are the sides in relation to the angle? So the H would be opposite, excuse me, and the 8 would be the hypotenuse. So which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine. So remember that sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, we're going to say sine of 50 degrees is equal to opposite side. I'm going to use H for opposite because that's the height that I want to find. And the hypotenuse is, excuse me, 8, right? So we're going to put 8 here. And then to solve that for H, we're going to multiply both sides by 8 right there. And then we can say that 8 times the sine of 50 degrees is equal to H. Right? So that's what we're that's where we're going to put this information right here because that was unknown. So we're going to say 12 times and what we found was 8 sine of 50 degrees. And then I'd probably just go ahead and type the whole thing into my calculator. I would not actually um, go through the process of doing 12 times 8 first. If you really want to, it's okay. You certainly know that 12 times 8 is 96. So it's not going to make any difference if you decided to do that first. But if you want to type in um, 12 times 8 uh, sine of 50, then that's okay as well. Sine 50 degrees. And the area is approximately, it didn't ask us to round to um, a particular 
um, if it doesn't ask you to round to a particular thing, this would be an exact value expression for that area, even though it doesn't mean a number that you really understand very well. But the approximate area would be 73.5 would be to the nearest tenths millimeters squared. Okay, and then you just need to pay attention to what you're being asked to find. Got it? All right, last one, a little bit different. We know that the area of a rhombus is 100 feet squared, and we want to find the length of each diagonal if one diagonal is twice as long as the other. So let's think about that for just a second. Let's try to say diagonal 1 is equal to x, and let's say diagonal 2 is 2x. And our formula for area of a rhombus is 1 half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Again, if you prefer to just put them over, multiply them together and put it over 2, that's the same thing. And the, the area is given, so I'm going to put that area over here on the left in place of A, and diagonal 1 is x times 2x all over 2. If you really want to see them in the picture, then here would be diagonal 1. This whole distance from here to here would be considered to be x. And then this whole distance from here to here would be considered to be 2x, but that's the length. Remember, that's the length of the entire diagonal, not just a chunk, right? All right, so we get 100 equals 2x squared over 2. Let's go ahead and cancel the 2s right there so that you, then you are left with 100 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to 10, right? So one diagonal measures 10. is 10 feet, right? We want to include our unit of measurements. And the other diagonal is twice as long, so that must be 20 feet. And then you could take those numbers, plug them back into your formula, and see if it gives you an area of 100. That's it. Hopefully that wasn't quite as bad as what you've had in some of the other sections.